Hi and welcome back to the video on how to go about texturing a character using Maya. This is part two of the series. The first part, if you had missed it, was to how to go about applying the um, planar mapping of our character using the UV texture editor doing planar mapping. We initially created a surface, it was a Lambert, and we applied a checkered uh, texture, 2D texture, to that surface. This um, video is about how to go about using Maya's rendering 3D paint tool uh, or painting tool that's available. So the first thing we're going to do is really emphasize the fact that I'm working with a character that is stored inside of a scene and that scene is a part of a project. If you're not working within a project and you'll see up here in my actual title bar that I'm working in my Maya folder inside of a projects folder and my files actually sitting inside of the scenes folder. This is a very important step to the next um, steps that we're going to go through because you have to be working within a project in order for Maya to create you the texture and the appropriate folder structure. So the first thing that we're going to do is um, modify our drop down list from polygons down to rendering. Our character is currently selected um, so you can see he's selected here. Turn on our, our selection arrow, which is the Q key. Go to the texturing menu, and we're going to go down to the options box next to the 3D paint tool. So you'll notice that as soon as I open this up in the lower right corner of my um, status bar, it lets me know that some surfaces have no file associated or attached to um, this character so it won't allow me to paint on it and you'll notice that as I hover over my character I get the no 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 sign so this lets me know that I have to go through the next step prior to being able to paint on top of the character. If you scroll down on the left hand side under the 3D paint tools you'll see a file texture section you may need to expand it under the file texture section there is a button in there called assign edit textures. I'm going to click on this and by default it's set to a pretty low resolution. I'm going to upgrade mine to 1024 in tab and it will automatically update both of them since I have the keep aspect ratio selected. In addition I'm going to modify the actual image format that is generated from what I'm about to paint. I'm going to go with the good old standard um, JPEG or a PNG file. Those are both great files um, that are flat files. Um, if you are going to take what you do inside of Maya and export it or modify it inside of Photoshop and then save your changes in Photoshop as a PSD file, you may very well choose to use PSD. I'm going to stick with my JPEG um, and I'm going to leave the fill texture seam selected and um, press the assign edit textures. Now, again, look to the lower right corner. If you get a yellow bar or a red bar down here or a warning or an error, you cannot move on. Um, in those cases, your best choice is to go back to your selection arrow, select your character once again, and reapply the Assign Edit Textures button once again. The exact same steps that happens on occasion, um, but you just have to reassign them. In our case, what you can see down here in the lower right corner is that the result colon lets me know that I am in fact prepared to do a 2D texture. Okay, And as I hover over my character, I've got this nice little circle without the do not draw a sign assigned to it. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to the flood section and given that my character is an alien of sorts I'm going to choose this lovely green character or green color and go with a flood paint. So I'm going to close out of the attributes panel, close out of the channel box, give myself a little bit more real estate to work with. Again I'm going to use a flood color and choose flood paint and now my character turns a lovely shade of green. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is uh, modify the actual color, which again is different than the um, flood paint because the color allows me to paint on our character. So I'm going to give my character some lovely little blue jeans. Um, and if I want to modify the actual brush size, I can hold down the B key and click and drag my mouse. You'll see that it will interactively change. It also lets me know what the decimal size is. 0.5 is what I'm going for ish in the area and you'll see that over here on the left hand side the brush U radius is set to 0.5 so that suffice for me again I'm going to paint on my leg and because I painted or I should say because I projected my character from the Z direction which is the front direction you'll notice that whatever I do on the front also happens on the back okay so I'm going to go through and take a moment here to paint out my character's legs 
Give it a good little coverage here. All right. Check out the back side. Make sure it all worked for me. Notice that I've got the striping effect happening on the side over here. And the reason for that is because I need to go into my um, painting tool and choose extend seam color. So when this striping action occurs, go back to the down section. And by default, I would recommend that you simply turn on um, update on stroke and extend seam color. However, I turned it off or didn't turn it on initially so that way you would see what the actual effects were. And then as you come back and paint over it, you can see that all of those um, striping areas have been modified once I've turned on the extend seam color. Okay. Okay. All right, so in the whereabouts of, not too bad. He's got some green feet because he's an alien. All right, so let's take a brief moment here to look at my UV texture editor. And if I look inside of my UV texture editor, you'll notice basically the areas in which I've col colored so far. Everything turned green. It's no longer a checkered pattern. And the pant area has been painted in as well as in the belt loop area. All right, now this is again the front of the character. So let's go up to the top here. Let's give him a different shirt color. Let's say he wants to wear a lovely shade of, I don't even know, let's go with the yellowish color. So he'll really stand out. So I'm gonna give him a nice yellow color. And again, because in my UV texture editor window, where my arm is, I flipped it over and put it on top of each other. So what I do uh, to the left, it happens to the right. What I do, it happens to the left. If this is a foreign concept to you, I recommend you go back looking at my prior video and see if it makes a little bit more sense after you go through uh, that video as to how I was able to work where it paints one side and it does it on both sides. Take some time here to brush this through. I've already turned on extend seam color, so it's taking care of those little nitty gritty details. I've got some interesting outcomes taking place on the chest area and the B key. Again, hold on the B key, click and drag your mouse and your brush will get nice and small. This will allow me to really modify what I want to happen around his neck and collar area. He's got a crew neck shirt on, so I think that looks fine. And again, what happens on the left happens on the right for the most part, except this is the shoulder area. So because we projected it from the Z, that's the front direction, I'm having to update both of these shoulder areas. But if I had painted the arm, it would happen all at once. All right, so his chest is completely bare because, as you may recall, we actually reprojected the front of our character from the Z direction so that way what we did on the front would not affect the back on purpose. For good reason we want the ability to give him a, a vest or something fun like that. So uh, with that let's modify his chest area. I'm going to fill in his shirt. Did I want to do that? Yeah. We're going to fill in the shirt here with yellow We'll make this his actual vest. There isn't a hotkey that I'm aware of that allows you to shift click or control click or command click. To create straight lines, this is a very arbitrary painting effect. If you're familiar with Photoshop, I recommend you take this into Photoshop and do all your fine detail work using the uh, nifty tools of Photoshop. Okay. So we're giving this nice little shirt area here. I think I was going to give him a vest is really what my game plan is. So I'm going to just paint in the rest here. We'll just give him all yellow. Okay. I'm going to switch over to my brush. It looks like it's looking a little fuzzy at the bottom. I want to be a little more solid with my ends. All right. So his shirt's a little disheveled. Okay. So now I'm going to go in and change my color to a brownish color because he's going to wear his fancy little brown vest. Kind of like Huckleberry Finn, huh? All right, so we'll paint in his chest area right here. We'll go through the shoulders, give him a nice little vest. We'll 
what I do in the front does it on the back, what I do in the left it does it to the right, yada, yada, yada. So I'll fill these in. These were in a vest. I wanted the yellow there as the show through because that's his t-shirt color. So I'm spending very little time being very definitive about the placement of my lines, but you kind of get the idea here. And once again, because I've colored in the back side of this, it does not affect the front side because of the way I reprojected it. Okay, all right. So this kind of gives you the idea that I can have something different on the front than I have on the back. Okay. So a couple things that you will experience when you do this is I've overpainted my chest, um, my my collarbone area. Okay. So what happens when I accidentally put too much brown on the top and I really don't want it to be there? Well, the solution is not to erase what you have, but to embrace it and fix it with what you wanted it to be. So to better clarify what I mean is there is an erase tool. inside of your paint operations, but I don't re recommend that you using it because what it does is it removes all the information, takes you back to the checkered pattern behind there. So instead, since I have a yellow that I've used before, it's listed right here, I can always use the color picker though and choose the right yellow. So I'm going to modify it back to my original yellow and basically what I'm saying is go back and fix it to what you want it to be. I'm going to zoom in real close here and change my brush size to a really small brush size and put back the color that I want to have on his neck area to get rid of the excess vest that I overpainted. And this works much better than if you were to um, use the erase tool. You'd still have to come back and fill it back in. And again, what I'm doing on the left does it on the right as well. So pretty straightforward. It kind of gives you a good idea how to go about coloring it in. You could do some additional fine details if you wanted to have some buttons or some strokes. Here's a square our artesian brush. With that, let's say we wanted to have um, a couple lines here for your button spots. Again, I'm being pretty quick about this. Here's the buttons themselves. I'll increase the button size a little bit, and I've also changed to a solid circle. So you can kind of see I've got three buttons. They'll match up nicely. Okay, so this is the process of going about to texturing out your character. Um, pretty straightforward, in my opinion. It looks pretty good. So I'm going to save this. Well, actually, okay, a couple things before I save the file is at the very bottom of the 3D Paint tool, you have a choice for save textures. So I'll click on that, and it will tell you that it's saving the textures. What it's letting you know when you click on this is where it actually saved the texture to. And by default, because you have that project set up properly, it's going to go to your actual project folder into the source images folder, which is expected. That's where all of your images come from. And then there's going to be another folder in there called 3D Paint Textures and another one in there called a Delgo 2D or 2 Textured and then it for whatever reason calls it Checker 1 Body but that's because it goes back to the fact that we originally created a 2D texture of Checker on top of our um, Body M surface which was a Lambert. Uh, briefly, I'm going to go back to my selection arrow, select my character, reopen the UV texture editor window. Um, kind of gives you a good idea of what all happened here. Is it basically colored in the areas that we wanted to modify? If you found that you had some stray colors, which I don't have really, but let's say there was a subtle adjustment and the yellow went too high. Um, certainly I would always recommend that you go to the 3D Paint Textures and modify the color once again to his green color. Modify your paintbrush. Kind of fill this a little bit better. But let's just say that you had a UV that really just wasn't wanting to play correctly, like I just overpainted there. I'm going to go back into my UV texture or UV mode. So right click and go to UV. At any point, 
You can make fine adjustments to your UVs, which does not affect the placement of the vertices. So for example, I've selected this particular UV right here. I'm going to turn on the Move tool, and it will adjust the placement of your objects here. So if there's a slight overlap or a slight gap, as long as you leave that material inside the color that you want it to be placed in, it's going to adjust the color placement. Okay? Um, use this as a fine tweaking mechanism, not as a do-all for all of them, but basically this allows you to really shove or move the colors out of the way that shouldn't be there. And again, it's not adjusting or, or, or modifying the actual shape of your object. It basically is just moving around the textures and how they're actually being laid out on your character. Most often you'll be able to paint it correctly, but on those fine details where you can't, that is a final solution. So again, if you press the 5 key, it takes you back to the default shaded gray color. The 6 key will take you into your hardware texturing. The menu to get to that point is under shading, and the check mark for hardware texturing is right there. Shading, hardware texturing is right here. I hope that helps you in how to go about using the rendering and inside the texturing 3D paint tools where we're able to go through and paint our character. Have a great night.